so Tim, you were the production designer on the movie Green Book. Uh, and I should say that uh, we are recording this the day after the Golden Globe Awards, when the movie won three prizes, including Best Film, uh, Best Supporting Actor for Mahershala Ali, and Best Screenplay. Um, first of all, what was your reaction to hearing the news and, and, and seeing that the movie uh, had won these three big prizes? Well, it's very gratifying, of course. Uh, I, I have to think that I always thought it could win something because it's such a great, great story and film. So it's sort of an affirmation. You know? and, um, so take us back to the beginning and what uh, first appealed to you about this story. I mean, you've, you've worked in period before, uh, you've even covered civil rights era history before. Um, so what about this story uh, stood out to you and made you want to work on it? Well, the, the characterizations were just so compelling and the uh, details of the, of the story were something that, you know, I felt really interested in. And so personally, I was drawn to it. Uh, I remember those days, you know, <laughs> and so I wanted to kind of uh, uh, go back down that road a little bit and it, it Especially, I think the music quality, the nature of the of the music, seemed like uh, such a wonderful device and and a, a magnet to hold the whole thing together with. That it it just made it seem so uh, purposeful somehow. And but yet I could tell that people would like it. You you know sometimes you read a script and you just think. People are going to respond to this. People will see it. And that just doesn't happen that often. Well, the script is uh, based on real life experiences of the two people uh, in the film, uh, Tony Vallelonga and Don Shirley. Um, and it's written by the son of one of those people, Mr. Nick Vallelonga. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you do research, obviously, I suppose, uh, whenever you're doing these period films, but how did having, um, you know, somebody who, you know, was there as a child and, you know, heard all these stories from his father. How did having that as an asset, um, you know, help in your research? Well, it's pretty unusual. Right. <laughs> you know? uh, Nick was, was really uh, very uh, helpful to us and, and uh, he can tell a story, you know? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we got a lot of, uh, a lot of detail about uh, his mom and his dad. I, I had to be kind of specific about things with him because you know it isn't the entire life story. Uh, mostly, we we wanted to find out about you know how they lived, where they lived, you know what his mother's influence and everything was. Right. What's interesting is that, um, you know, there's a couple of different things I wanted to talk to you about, but the contrast mm -hmm. that you show, uh, first of all, in the way that Tony Lip lives and, and his uh, mm -hmm. home, and then the way that Don Shirley lives and his home. Can you just talk a bit about uh, the contrast between those two homes? Oh, sure. Well, it's built in for one thing, you know, with the, the class differences. And... Uh, Pete Fairley was was very clear about wanting Lip's place to be really modest, and uh, uh, it was a you know a real beginning place for that conversation. And then uh, the Don Shirley uh, exploration was a little more wide open because. Um, there's there was some reference material around, but it was more of a, a kind of an idea of how he lived, you know, than something that ordinary people could imagine. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, talk a little bit about that because you know, you, you go into this the first time that we meet Don Shirley. It's in his uh, in his apartment, which is right above Carnegie Hall, and it's yeah. you know, it's filled with all kinds of you know, uh, furniture and paintings and, and you know, knickknacks from various countries all over the world. And just talk a bit about, you know, designing that home. Sure. Well, he was a, 
erudite guy, right? And so he had, you know, a very sophisticated kind of worldview from, you know, our imagining of him. We, fortunately, he, you know, he wasn't there to ask, but, you know, he had this Afrocentric interest and he is, his, uh, training in Europe and life in, in London and, and Russia, that's all, you know, kind of uh, indicated in the script. But we just went down that path, you know, and, and uh, but let's, let's bring those things into his uh, surroundings. And then just to have a real elegance to the place was a, the built-in contrast with Tony. So the, uh, I mean, the musical stuff was obvious, right? Uh, his interest there, but the, the things from his travels were, were you know, really fun to do. And Selena Vanderbrink, our decorator, had a, had a good eye for all that stuff. She, you know, there was, um, it looks like a lot of things are in that set, but all of those things are also very purposeful. And it, it's not always, you know, apparent that you can't tell what a picture is actually of that's on the wall. But they, they all had some meaning. And then I thought that, you know, as a character, he, he was kind of... Uh, surface oriented a little bit, you know, he's very concerned with his appearance and his presentation and all of that. And so uh, we made sure there was a lot of glitter in the place, the mirrors and the crystal and the shiny surfaces that, you know, sort of bounced the light around and reflected him. Uh, and that, that helped a lot too in the space that we ended up uh, shooting in. It's interesting then to see the contrast when they get on the road and they're traveling through the South and you see the hotel accommodations that are afforded uh, to <laughs> white people and the hotel accommodations that are afforded to black people. And it's a very different kind of world that these two men are then going to. Can you just talk a little bit about that, that contrast? Well, that's the road trip, you know. Um, when they leave New York City, you know, they've both journeyed, be, you know, out there for, for Tony Lip, of course, it's, it's the, it passed any boundary he ever knew. And uh, uh, Dr. Shirley, of course, he knew what he was getting into. But the uh, uh, design of the road trip had to take in sort of where they were going and then how they were going to come back. And uh, so, so it, it's a progressive kind of journey that way that sort of bottoms out when they're in the jail mm -hmm. and things are the most bleak there and all the colors drained out and the, the you know, the light is harsh and, and, it sort of begins to work its way back. And uh, the contrast between where Tony Lip would spend the night, right, and, uh, and poor Don Shirley, uh, that was, you know, uh, uh, more of a challenge of, of uh, illustrating the uh, style of the times. Uh, because the, you know, that said more about it than the, than the spaces in a way. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, it does, it, uh, you know, from a character point of view, mm. you know, it, it really does say a lot about, you know, what somebody like Don Shirley, you know, was faced with at that time, you know, both. Oh, yeah, yeah, really yeah. I mean, the, the truth is, is hard to see sometimes now. The the real green book type of accommodations were super varied. You know, a lot of it was more of a, a what they would call like a, a tourist home, right? Like yeah. someone had a room to rent in their house. 
or or more like a boarding house kind of situation and uh, you know, we didn't really have the opportunity to show too much of that. He, you know, in the film, you get the idea, but we actually only see two places where he he spends the night. Uh, the first time at that sort of courtyard motel place uh, where the guys are playing horseshoes, and then later when uh, uh, Tony stays with him in the the room together so we had to kind of pack in the the whole feeling of what that uh, situation was like and and use both of those to represent you know a much bigger experience right um i was surprised to see that you guys made this for a budget of about 23 million dollars um, which for a movie that has so many locations and, you know, I mean, you, you theoretically you're traveling, you know, you know, across the swath of the country while you're doing this. Um, was it difficult to, uh, from your end to work on that kind of budget? And I mean, how do you work around that? Well, you know, there's a virtue in having limitations. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it, it affected the art department, of course, because you could. Uh, uh, we really shot the whole film on location, and we didn't. We couldn't build any sets. It, it was not part of the program. But uh, it, it, the budgetary things, sort of forced the schedule into uh, very quick days, and that was more of a pressure in a way. Uh, this, the scenes are kind of discreet in the, in the story. So you can create that moment, then you just have to, to you know, be clever about everything. And uh, when you don't have a lot of dough to, you know, make places much better than they really are, then it's all about the location scouting. Mm -hmm. and, and you just have to find the places that sort of fit your mold. And that, that was probably the effect of, you know, not having the luxury of, of uh, uh, making sets from scratch or, or really just kind of getting blank canvases to work on. Was there a particular location that, um, you know, stood out to you as, as being a favorite? I mean, I think about, um, you know, that, uh, that restaurant that they eat at towards the end and, you know, he goes up and plays the piano, oh. and, uh, <laughs> you know, that was a, you know, I mean, finding those little places, I mean, was there a particular one that you just, you know, where you're like, oh, this is great. Or, you know, you had to add a lot to it or just, you know, yeah, well, uh, they were kind of divided into categories in a way. You know, there's the things that, the, the performance stuff with all the, the theaters and those things, and then the establishments along the road. I, I had a kind of a, 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 a great affection for the Stuckies that we ended up having, which is where uh, uh, Don Shirley first helps uh, Tony Lip write a letter, mm -hmm. which was a, a kind of a cool place that we made. And uh, those roadside things are real snapshots of the past. The diner, that was my favorite that uh, I really, you know, had to negotiate to be able to shit there <laughs> was the, the one where they're, uh, they're in Pennsylvania and they're talking about uh, the record Orpheus. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that place was a time capsule and I was so excited to find it. And uh, we worked it out to, to be able to shoot there. It was, that was a real, a real hero place for us, I thought. 
Well, Tim, Gavin, thank you so much, and uh, congratulations on the film. Uh, everyone who uh, I've talked to who have seen it loves it, um, so uh, I'm sure you're very oh. proud of it. Thank you so much. I am, and thanks for having a conversation, Zach. Of course, you're welcome. Have a good one. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, thank you.